for this second part of your Kin 225 lecture for February 24th. I'm going to continue on the topic of cross-education and go over a couple of, uh, of experiments that were done in our college utilizing this neurophenomenon. So in this first experiment, we had three groups, um, one trained only using their right arm, one trained only using their left arm, and one did no training. Uh, so, and then all participants were right arm dominant. Um, and then we assessed uh, strength and brain activity before and after the training. I think the training program was around eight weeks long. Um, and this graph shows the changes in strength with the training program. Uh, so first of all, looking at the group that just trained their left arm, um, as you'd expect, their left arm strength went way up. So this is the percent change in strength. Uh, the right arm strength hardly changed at all or had a very small change. Uh, the really strange result here was that the group that trained their right arm, again, they saw an increase in strength of the trained arm, but um, they saw this huge increase in strength of the untrained arm. So in this particular study, it looked like there was, it looked like there was a greater amount of cross education if the people trained their right arm, which was the dominant arm, they saw an increase in left arm strength and the left arm was untrained. Whereas if they trained their left arm, it looked like they hardly had any crossover of strength to the untrained arm. So to summarize this, it appears that the cross education effect is stronger when the dominant limb is trained and transferred to the non-dominant limb versus the other way around. And there's a couple of theories here. The first theory is that the dominant limb or dominant hemisphere is more proficient at learning and mastering a task, leading to better quality adaptations. So here you have your dominant versus your non-dominant. Your dominant is better at learning, ta learning tasks, so you get a greater crossover from the dominant to the non-dominant side of the brain. Another theory here is that um, you know, the non-dominant limb starts off quite a bit weaker and the dominant limb is stronger to start off with. Uh, so the non-dominant limb just has a, a, a greater room for improvement and, and maybe that's why you see the greater crossover effect to the non-dominant side. So some mechanisms behind cross-education. Uh, we've assessed brain activity during unilateral training, and we have shown that there is a crossover of brain activation from one side of the brain to the other when you do unilateral training. So we've done this, uh, again, I, I showed you this diagram before, this picture before, uh, of using functional magnetic resonance imaging. It assesses brain activity while a person does exercise. So in this case, we had the people training doing this a uh, hand grip type exercise, and then we put them into this MRI to measure their brain activity before and after training. And essentially what we found, these are just brain images um, of the trained right arm activation and the trained left arm. And what we saw is we saw increased activation, um, you know, during uh, the right arm exercise, but also during left arm exercise from before to after training the right arm. So this is the untrained arm. We saw increased brain activation uh, when that arm was exercised after training the right arm. So it looked like there was crossover um, in what was going on in uh, um, the side of the brain that controls the right arm, which is your left side of the brain. Um, you got crossover uh, to the right side of the brain, which controls the left arm. In these diagrams, it looks like um, the activation is on the wrong side of the brain. So the left side of the body controls, or the left side of the brain controls the right arm. The right side of the brain controls the left arm. It looks like the right side of the brain is being activated here, but you're actually looking at uh, the picture from the wrong way here. So, um, you know, you're looking at the, uh, the, the bottom of the brain here. Uh, so it's actually the left side of the brain that's controlling the right arm. And here it's the right side of the brain that's controlling the left arm. 
Um, now, how can the cross education effect be applied to a rehabilitation setting? So this is a question that I, I posted in your PowerPoint. Um, if you can think of uh, injuries or conditions where uh, you need to uh, have this crossover effect, um, there's two different conditions here. One would be unilateral injury. So if you break an arm or break one leg, you can train the opposite arm or opposite leg um, to prevent strength loss in the injured side. And the same thing applies to stroke. So stroke uh, usually affects one side of the body. You can train the unaffected side of the body to increase strength of the affected side. So we've looked at um, a couple of experiments uh, using this concept. The first one is we took healthy people and we put them into cast for three weeks and we trained the uncasted side of the body uh, to see what would happen in the casted side. So we have healthy participants here. Um, they were again put in cast for three weeks. So uh, it was their non-dominant uh, limb, uh, the left arm that was casted. Um, so this picture is wrong. It was the uh, left arm that was casted, not the right arm. Um, uh, and we had three groups. One was casted and they trained their right arm while their left arm was casted. We had a group that just had the left arm casted and they did no training. And then we had a control group that had neither casting nor training. And we measured, measured strength and muscle size changes over the three weeks. This graph shows the changes in strength over the three weeks. So the top graph shows the right arm that did all the training. And as you'd expect, the group that trained had an increase in strength of the right arm. And then the other groups that did no training of the arm had hardly any changes in strength. So that's pretty, pretty typical. That's quite typical of the trained side. The interesting side here was the left casted arm. So you can see the group that was just casted without the training, they had a decrease in strength. Whereas the group that was casted, but they did training of the right arm, they had uh, no change in strength. So it looked like the training of the uncasted arm prevented strength loss in the casted arm. So this is the group that did the training of the right arm and their left arm had a maintenance of strength. Whereas the group that did no training and had casting of the left arm, they actually lost strength. So these next set of graphs are kind of uh, uh, really interesting. So this is changes in muscle thickness or muscle size with the program. So again, the right arm that trained, as you'd expect, uh, the group that trained, they went up a bit with muscle size. Um, the other groups pretty much stayed the same. Now this is the casted side. Uh, again, the casted group that did no training of the right arm saw a decrease in the muscle size of the left arm. And uh, this is the strange result in that the right arm training prevented loss of muscle size in the left arm that was casted. So a pretty interesting result. Uh, this is another study we did with, um, these are with uh, uh, women over 50 years of age that, that had fractured one wrist and we had them do either a normal rehabilitation program or had them do strength training with this hand grip device for the unbroken arm after they had their casts taken off. And this is the results of this study. Uh, this is the change in strength that we saw uh, at nine weeks after taking the cast off, and then at 12 weeks after taking the cast off. You can see they had a decrease in strength of, um, this is the fractured limb um, in both cases, uh, but the group that trained their uh, unfractured limb had a lower strength loss, at least at 12 weeks, compared to the group that, that did no training of the healthy limb. So this is strength loss in the limb that was broken after taking the cast off. Uh, and um, uh, it was less in the group that did training of the uncasted limb. So this is a summary of these two studies. Uh, and so I think this, this slide really simplifies 
uh, what I've just talked about. So when the left arm is casted, training of the right arm prevents loss of strength and perhaps even loss of muscle mass in the left arm. And training of the non-broken wrist prevents loss of strength in the broken wrist.